Hello, beautiful, and welcome to The Gifted Table. Today, we're going to discuss using your five senses to read the room. No, to read you. So pull up your seat. It's time to get gifted. Seven thirty-eight fifty-five. It's research that tells us and indicates that the average communication we do is seven thirty-eight fifty-five. Seven percent of all of our daily communication is done through verbal. That's right, seven percent. So that leaves ninety-three percent of our daily communication is nonverbal. Thirty-eight percent of that nonverbal communication is our tonality or our voice, is our tone. And then the remaining 55% is our body language. You know, those things we do, folding our arms, not making eye contact, leaning back, or perhaps it's just talking to other people during the meeting while somebody else is presenting. You've seen that. You've done that. Tell the truth. So let's start with our senses and how we as leaders can improve on it and use it for our benefit and make sure we're connecting with people. Our first sense is sight. What do you see people doing? Are you even paying attention to the room? Better yet, how's their body language and how is their body language a reflection of what they're seeing from you? Are they leaning into your conversation or are they slouching back away? Are they looking down or at each other? Are they engaging by what you see? If you were on your team, how would you connect with based on what your own body language is doing? You know, how, what kind of gestures are you making? your presentation? Are you making eye contact with everyone? Are you scanning the room, right? Do they see you smiling? Or are you just paying attention to the people and looking at those who, you know, are, are on your team, the ones who you really like? No, you love everybody. I know you love everybody on your team. But we have to be mindful of that because what they see us doing is a reflection of what we may see them doing. So let's pay attention to that. I want to challenge you to record yourself during one of your meetings. Just videotape yourself to see how you're connecting with people. Don't change your style. Don't change your agenda. Don't change the way you go about things, but simply use this as a way to see how they see you. And again, if you saw you, how would you connect? After you've recorded it, go take a look at it, play it back and play it back without the sound, just the sight. What do you notice about yourself? Since number two, sound. A 2017 study reported that the brains of those who are born blind make new connections in the absence of visual information. So what does that mean? The absence of one thing, something else is heightened. And typically it is heightened sense of hearing, smell and touch. And then for some people, even cognitive abilities such as memory and language. But let's imagine just sound, right? Imagine if you closed your eyes and heard your presentation or how you facilitate a meeting. Would your sense of hearing be enhanced? Would it be engaged? That video that I asked you to make about yourself conducting a meeting or workshop or what have you, I want you to use that same video recording. See, I'm, I'm already giving you a call to action. I'm, I'm betting you're going to do this and I'm challenging you to do this. Use that same video recording that you watched without the sound. And now I want you to listen to it without the video. How was your tonation? Did it vary? Was it monotone? Hmm. Was it high dub? Hey, high dub! Without an ebb and a flow? Remember, 38% of communication is your tone. It's your tone. Okay, sense number three is smell. Now, I know you're thinking, what does smell have anything to do about me presenting or facilitating a meeting or, you know, being in front of my team? Well, does your smell trigger people? Yes, your smell. Olfaction communication reminds us that the limbic system is not only the part that smell is processed, but it's also 
the system providing the processing of significant emotions, such as liking something, getting angry, pleasure, love, compassion, aggression, and many other senses, just from your sense of smell. Some people like to walk around a room when they're presenting and use proximity, which is great. But be sure that when you are within someone else's personal space, that your lotion, your perfume, your cologne, your deodorant, or the absence of doesn't communicate negatively. How would you know that? Simply ask an ally. Please ask an ally, you know, the person that you trust. Think about it. What do you do when someone walks past you and they smell, okay, I'm just going to say it like grilled onions, like they just walked out of In-N-Out Burgers for those of you who live in California. What, do you make a face? Do you want to engage with them? They're just standing there talking to you and you're like, oh, okay. Sense number four is touch. Here's where you have to be very careful using both your ethical and moral values when communicating, especially when it involves others. Shaking hands or greeting people while they're entering or exiting the room is a great way to set the overall tone. Just be sure it is mutual. Be sure to read their body language. If you're one who would like to clasp or wring your hands during presentations, is that distracting? Do you tap the table with your fingers or with your pen? Could that be distracting? Even though you're not touching anyone, you're touching something. And remember, you're facilitating, you're conducting. So people are seeing you and how you're using your hands and what you're touching. So be aware of that sense of touch. And then finally, taste. Now, I know you're really like, okay, for real, Dr. Mal, we're talking about taste. I'm facilitating. I'm conducting a meeting. What do you mean taste? When it's all said and done, was the presentation pleasing or did it leave a bad taste in your audience's mouth? Think about it. We're still talking about our senses. Are you still looking at their body language? Are you still listening to maybe some rumblings or or congratulations? Are you seeing a lot of nodding heads or a lot of shaking heads? Like, oh no, no, she didn't. Oh my goodness. Mm -mm." How do you know if you left a bad taste in their mouth or not? You can take a survey or ask for feed forward and get their opinions. So think of a document that you can create that's distributed and collected at the end of the meeting. So pass it out at the beginning, collect it at the end, and just put four squares on the document. Questions, Comments, connections, kudos. As you're doing your presentation, as you're sharing the information, engage with your team by asking them to write questions as you're presenting. Make comments on there so they don't forget their thoughts. What are they making connections with? What's something that they're like, oh, I can possibly do that. And then what's something they may have heard that was a kudo? Or maybe perhaps they want to give kudos to someone else or maybe kudos to you. Make sure they put their name on it because we want accountability, right? In the date, very simple, but then collect it and see what you have. Before you leave, you may ask them, okay, who had questions? And then address their questions then. You may ask someone if they have comments, okay, and connections and kudos. And then that will give you an idea of how the presentation felt to them. Okay, ladies, you have been awesome. Here again is my call to action for you. Videotape yourself at a meeting. Ask one of your staff to use your phone to do so. Very simple. We use our phones for everything else. Why not to videotape ourselves? Reassure them that this is only for you. It's for you to get a clear picture of how you're communicating with them. So get your videotape. Remember, you're going to use that for two things. You're going to watch it. Don't have the sound, just the sight. Then listen to it without the video. How do you sound? What's your tonation? Does it vary? Secondly, I want you to create a T-chart with one side labeled wow and the other side labeled work. The wow side is for all of the pluses you notice about your communication. The work side, areas for you to improve for better communication. And then lastly, do you have a tip for how to spotlight your senses? Leave a comment below. And don't forget to like this video. I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and do the call to action. I'm believing in you and trusting in you. Thank you for taking your seat here at the Gifted Table. And remember, stay grounded, innovative, fierce, transparent every day. In other words, stay gifted. I'll see you next time. You just got gifted.